Hey, everybody. Welcome to VaynerX Presents, Marketing for the Now. Gary, how are you doing? I'm quite well. Andrea, how are you? I am good. I'm always excited for these episodes, but I think this one is going to be a particularly juicy one. Next, we welcome Adam Braun, New York Times bestselling author, speaker, entrepreneur, and founder of Pencils of Promise, the award-winning nonprofit that has built more than 500 schools globally. Adam was also co-founder and CEO of Mission U, a higher education startup named one of Fast Company's 50 most innovative companies before being acquired by WeWork. Adam has been featured as a speaker in the White House, the United Nations, and the Clinton Global Initiative. Welcome, Adam. Thank you for having me. Adam. Hey, Gary. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. I, I should disclose that I've been a very, very proud board member for quite a long time and mm -hmm. adore this human being quite a bit. So this may be a very soft kind of sweet interview, <laughs> but I'll try to get some juice out of it. Adam, uh, what's, what's, how are you as a human thinking about innovation in 2021? Maybe as a parent, as a, a friend, as an operator? When I just throw that out to you, where do you go? Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's a couple of different threads for me right now. I, I think, you know, one of them is um, Pencils of Promise, for, for those who aren't familiar, we're, you know, a global, uh, what we think of as a four purpose, 501c3 nonprofit um, organization that uh, builds schools, um, provides access to quality teacher training, and, and really wrap around support for students uh, across Asia, Africa, and Central America. And, and um, you know, as was mentioned at the start, we've now built more than 500 schools. Around the world, uh, we serve about 100,000 students daily, and you know, Gary's been, you know, an incredible, incredible not just you know friend to the organization, but when I asked him to get involved, he said, "Adam, if I'm going to do this, I'm going all in." And I'm, uh, and so he's been a, a, a member of our board of directors, um, and an incredible one at that. And you know, truthfully, Gary, this this whole uh, last year has kind of brought me back to the beginning of of when Pencil of Promise was created because. Uh, I, I founded the organization in October of 2008. Uh, it was, uh, I believe, maybe two or three weeks after Lehman Brothers declared bankruptcy. And you know, there was this feeling at the time that the kind of institutions that everyone looked at with such reverence that, that were kind of untouchable, uh, that suddenly not just one, but then multiple toppled and and as much as there was a lot of sadness and you know people were losing jobs you and I were both in New York at the time and you know it's, it was a really difficult moment culturally but in that kind of darkness there was two things that that I observed that I'm now seeing again uh, the the first is um, just an explosion of of innovation of willingness to try new things of of kind of you know dissipation of fear that existed beforehand that people are suddenly saying you know some I got nothing to lose and so I'm willing to try something. And then the second is, um, I think in, in hard moments, um, you know, people gravitate towards the good and they, they seek out opportunities to be a part of something that's a little bit bigger than themselves that can, you know, maybe focus a little bit more on creating legacy. And, and you know, as I look at kind of the rebound from 2020, now hopefully an upswing into 2021, um, I feel like I'm seeing that. I feel like you know, okay. there's just a willingness to try new things and ideally align those new things with creation of good. And you know, whether it's in my role as a parent to young twins or you know, in my role as um, executive chairman at, at Pencils of Promise, uh, I'm excited about the willingness to try new things. And, and our, our gala last year that you know you, you were a huge uh, driver of how we not only um, crafted it. But then in the execution of it, I think it was a perfect example of that. You know, it's funny, two of the people in my life, you know, that I think of as most thoughtful on this exact show, we started this show today with Will I Am. And I think he's just quite thoughtful in the time I spent. I, I think the same about you. Is there, from that thoughtfulness lens, since you both were on and it was just, I was just thinking about it. Has this time being down, at least not moving physically, allowed you to think more and has that led to learning about more innovations it just oh, struck me a hundred percent a hundred percent i mean you know you know this but um for those who aren't familiar I, I normally live in the new york area and in you know consideration of the fact that preschool was potentially going to go remote again the uncertainty of what you know the the academic year looked like 
uh, I relocated uh, with my wife and little kids to the top of Powder Mountain in Utah. And right now behind me on this screen is, you know, an expansive series of mountains. I'm at 9,000 feet of elevation. And, you know, when, when you <laughs> kind of forcibly put yourself in places like this, um, whether it's physically or, or, or mentally, you just start, you know, one, um, being a little bit more patient in ways that, that you probably weren't historically, or at least that I was. And, and what it leads to is I, I find, you know, I, I feel like I'm thinking bigger thoughts. I'm looking at longer time horizons, you know, the, the commitment uh, to the next week is still there, but my mind is also really thinking about the commitment to the next decade. And, you know, I, I remember um, one of our, our uh, board members previously, the great Ray Chambers, mm -hmm. uh, challenged me many years ago when I was asking him, you know, how do I push this organization forward? How do we do great work? How do we impact more kids? And he said, you know, Adam, if I was you, I would look at, uh, you know, your abilities, your relationships, uh, where you want to focus your energy, but I would also think about where the world is going to go in the next five years and how can you align those two things to really intersect. And that's how I'm, I'm thinking about all the different parts of my life. I mean, you know, I, 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 uh, I said this to some of the Pencil Promise, you know, board members previously, and I'm totally comfortable sharing it publicly. You know, the world looked very different in 2008 when the organization was started and the goal was to build as many schools as we could. And now I think a lot about not just how do we push, um, you know, our, our scale um, to be faster, but how do we make it smarter? How, how do we, you know- More impact, right? This is something yeah. we talk all the time. Impact, exactly. impact, impact, right? Exactly, and, and you know, if- And by the uh, way, by the way, you're, you know, as executive chair, your DNA is so still in the thing that you created, mm -hmm. you're a different man. I mean, you know, yeah. as soon as you said that the world looks so different, you know, in my own head, because I'm trying not to interrupt here because people get mad, but I only have 10 minutes, so I'm trying to get the things, but yeah, yeah, I said to myself, you're different. Very, very. I mean, I didn't have kids at the time, right? I mean, you know, the, the, the difference between rationally thinking about what do I want for the well-being of a child versus now as a parent uh, thinking about how do I want my kids to experience education and then how do I apply that to the attainment of education for kids around the world who might not have access to it otherwise? It's just a totally different lens. And, you know, I, I think... Uh, at the same time, you know, we've always been very brand centric as an organization. Yes. And I think the the success of our brand has really been rooted in authenticity more than anything else. And, and that's something that I think you and I have always really kind of um, connected on. Like yeah. Adam, um, let's have a, a little friendship chat. Yeah. You, the human outside the arena of pop and, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, have you picked up video games? Are you watching more Netflix? Like, tech, like Clubhouse, TikTok? Mm. The innovation lens of you, my buddy. Yeah. Like if, if it's just me and you right now catching up, I'm like, hey, you know, just do my own research because you know yeah. I love this shit. Like, what have yeah. you been hot on from an innovation standpoint, or what blew you away, or what's going on in this mountain now? Do they like deliver hot cocoa in one second <laughs> if you hit a button? Like, what innovation yeah. struck you in these last two minutes for some fun? Sure. Um, so you know, I was really uh, probably like you, one of the kind of earlier people that were fortunate to get an invite onto Clubhouse, and and I spent some time on it. And then I thought, ah, this is just taking me away from being present with the people in front of me. And <laughs> I kind of stepped away and I didn't use it for months. But uh, I recently got invited into um, a, a, a room, like a session that was being run. And man, I was blown away by just the connective tissue that was being experienced across totally different parts of, of a subsector of an industry. It's like so, those old, old jam sessions that we used to do. A hundred percent. That, that, that has been a big part for me. I think another one is, um, you know, I feel like to some extent I've like reconnected with the value of text and, and WhatsApp chains, you know, mm -hmm. like before they, they weren't as, as kind of, um, I don't know, it was like more one-on-one -on -one connection. Um, but just, yeah, I think the social isolation. Like, like everybody misses socialization. So you got your high school crew, your basketball crew. Exactly. My sports, sports colleagues, cards, like sports the, the amount of chatter. My, my last year, my main social uh, experience was a WhatsApp chain from my fantasy football league, which is college friends. And, and so I think that's been a, a, a big one. And then at the same time, I mean, I always had a mindfulness and meditation practice, but mm -hmm. um, in the last year, I've really been able to lean into it and spend a lot more time on it. Um, and you know, there's a whole bunch of apps out there, but, but I'll give a shout out. There's one called shine. I have no affiliation to it. Um, but, um, I discovered it through, Say one uh, time. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. It's What's called shine. shine. Spell uh, it. Shine. S H I N E shine. Um, and then another one I just met, uh, the entrepreneur on a chairlift, uh, the other day it's called breathwork. 
Um, and love it's them. kind of like a modified version of full meditation. It's I know, I know them very well. I love them. Adam, I love you more. We'll talk so soon.